Welcome to Weekly Strange News. In this show, we take a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over in the show, I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to all of my first time viewers and listeners, and of course, everyone watching this live. Please make sure to support my work by just hitting the like button right down below on YouTube and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already as we do three live shows right here on this channel covering topics from UFOs, the paranormal, and things that are unexplained. Also on this channel, I do post YouTube shorts keeping you up to date on the latest strange news. And Daniel said it better than anyone else. Hit that like button do that right now because we got some pretty cool news and you know what this week is ufo heavy here today to be fair uh, we there was no strange news last week i was out of town so bringing in some last week news and some this week news of course i'm pretty excited and for this very first topic or article in this case it comes with a video i'm pretty you're gonna like it you're gonna like it so i want to share my screen here there it is. And this is coming from a news station in Bogota, Colombia. So I'm going to read it as this video plays out. And it says a curious incident in Colombia saw several glowing UFOs appear in the night sky to the astonishment of multiple witnesses. According to local media report, as we're seeing right here on screen, the curious case occurred this past Friday evening in the country's capital city, city of Bogota. As people were out in Enjoying their evening, as they do, they were suddenly stopped in their tracks by the sight of the bewildering illuminated objects that appeared overhead. Now, many of the witnesses managed to capture the peculiar UFOs on film and on social media in Colombia, and it was just soon flooded with footage of the anomalies from various angles, including one particularly remarkable video wherein a crowd of awestruck people watch the oddities in the sky, and we were able to watch that here on screen. But here is the crazy thing about this, is that as of now, officials in Bogota have offered no explanation for the strange occurrence, leaving the incident a mystery. And that is the odd aspect here. Could it be a meteor? Could it be a meteor shower? Could, could it be a shooting star? Could it be satellites, right? These are questions that a lot of people are asking. And I get that. And you need to have a skeptical mindset. But what's odd here is that the officials in Bogota haven't given an explanation. If it really was, have it be a satellite or a meteor shower or a shooting star, swamp gas, right? They would say, okay, it's, it's one of these. But to give no answer, that's an answer in itself, don't you think? But what from the video that you just saw, saw <laughs> I'm, I'm mushing all of my words here today, but out of what you just saw thus far, what was going through your mind while watching it? Do you think, oh, it must have a mundane explanation, or it does look rather odd and extraordinary, or something else? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. I do try my best to read all of the comments here. But Madman says, that's weird, wild stuff. Oh, yes. Oscar says aerial gas. You know what? It could be it could be anything here. Chris says this is another mass sighting. This is what we need. And that's the cool thing about this particular sighting and why I wanted to bring it up. One of several reasons. The, the biggest reason is that a, a local media in Colombia was willing to just acknowledge it. That, that's a big plus. And I'm like, yes, heck yes. Thank you. But aside from that, it took place in the capital of Colombia, one of the most populated areas in the country. And there have been multiple videos of, from different angles, as it mentioned in the article, of people seeing this in the sky last Friday. And the question is, what's going on here? Because I think someone in that crowd would say, to my understanding, it's a satellite because X, Y, and Z, but we haven't gotten any of those explanations, at least not yet. And it's been in, in, the, in the media, you know, on social media for a week now. So I found that aspect a little odd. Robert says, I think we need to accept we are being visited and it's going to increase. You know what? I kind of hope so. 
That'd be very, very cool because it's only when we have a mass sighting, maybe like the Phoenix Lights, will people will that would be classified as disclosure for many people. And this, in this case, for this particular sighting, would that be classified as a mass sighting? Yes, it's just kind of just a little light in the sky hidden behind clouds. Anyone could brush it off as a natural anomaly. I understand that. But if at some point we're able to see the shape of the craft in great detail, again, as an example of the Phoenix Lights, it would be a game changer. At least I hope so. But people in 97 thought that the Phoenix Lights was going to be a game changer, but it was very quickly brushed off as a military exercise. And then and then people stopped talking about it. Now, you and I, we talk about it very often, and I get that because we... We're the odd ones here. But the majority of people, they're like, Phoenix Lights? What? What's that? And you're thinking, what? what do you mean, what's that? It's one of the biggest sightings of all time. It's unbelievable. But getting into our next aspect here, still covering UFOs, is the UAPDA that was denied in the House Representatives in the United States. So I'm going to share my screen here. This is merely as a visual aid. Of course, if you've watched this show, you know the drill. But I liked this photo. I felt like it was very appropriate. So known as the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon Disclosure Act of 2023, the bill would require every government office to release to the public any and all records concerning UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Yes, and no to that from this article. Um, later, it was later explained that it would have to be looked over by a group first before releasing that information to the public. Because if you were to literally release everything, it would be classified as a national security threat. And I know you're going to roll your eyes. You're like, Christina, why are you saying this? If you have the mentality of the military or of the government, right, they're going to say national security threat. But aside from that, this bill was denied. Now, we've, we've known about it since the summer with uh, Chuck Schumer and the Schumer Rounds Amendment, which was kind of the original name. And to my understanding, in some roundabout way, it's now known as the UAPDA. And so they were pushing for it for quite some time. And then after it finally reached where it needed to go, in this case, the House of Representatives, they said, Denied, not happening. And it makes you ask the big question if there's nothing to hide, why deny this UAPDA? Right? Exactly. It's a lot of questions here, and it's just very odd. I did a short on it so yesterday, maybe it was two days ago, on YouTube. You can also find it on my Instagram at Strange Paradigms, giving you a very quick rundown of that because there seems to be two factions here those pushing for UAP disclosure and the others strictly opposing it. But then we had um, former chief of ATIP, Lou Elizondo, posting on Twitter, and he mentioned that, don't worry, there's a plan B, a plan C, and so forth. So this, for many, not for everyone, but for a good majority of people, they're like, okay, at least we're getting the ball rolling. At least we have people that are doing what we asked them to do, right? Others are saying, oh, this is all just misinformation, misdirection, and I, and I can get that mentality. I've jumped down that rabbit hole already, and it's 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 a tough one. But in all of this, my biggest question is, why was it made public to begin with? The Chuck the Schumer Rounds Amendment, now known as the UAPDA, only to be denied. Like you're raising people's hopes up, showing public interest, getting people excited and to research it on their own, only to say, you know what? Mm, it didn't really hit the spot for me. <laughs> it's just it's just odd. I have so many questions. But when you are dealing with the government and government officials, you don't 100% know what they're thinking and why they are doing the things that they do because it's it's so multifaceted. There's so many layers that for the majority of people, myself included, okay, you're not going to catch it all. You're not going to understand everything here. 
But it says here that the House Republicans are also attempting to kill another common sense bipartisan measure passed by the Senate, which I was proud to co-sponsor. And this is a a quote from Chuck Schumer to increase transparency uh, around what the government does and does not know about UAP. So first I, ha- I must say, I like the fact that there are people in the government that are pushing for this. You have Chuck Schumer, you have Tim Burchett, Anna Paulina Luna, Matt Gates, and a handful of other people. And they're, they're putting their career on the line. We also need to keep in mind that the UFO topic has become a hot topic since 2017. But ever since Grush came forward, the UAP whistleblower, and he gave his his commentary is the best word to use to the government that's now on record that's when people's eyes got even bigger than before and they said oh my gosh this topic is amazing it's not just for the cool cats like us but it's for everyone now and you know what first of all fully for that 100 percent, i wouldn't have it any other way but this is something that people are jumping on the bandwagon as i understand because it's gaining a lot of traction But also when it comes to this as well, we have to bring in the conversation with the the Joe Rogan experience and David Grush. And it says here, because Joe asked, like, why do you think they're blocking this bill? This was from a while ago, right? Because it's gone through a few hiccups, but now it's been officially denied, at least so we think thus far. And Joe says... Why Why are they blocking the bill? I mean, it's not costing them much. It's a few million dollars a year max, you know, for the panel, which is like vaporware in U.S. government speak, right? And Grush says, if there's nothing to see here, why are Mike Rogers and Mike Turner in the House blocking this bill? That is, in my opinion, the, the most important legislation for transparency in American history. Back it up for just a sec. So it was Mike Rogers and Mike Turner that denied the bill, the UAPDA. Why are both their names Mike? Like, sh- should we be weary of, of Mike's here? Do they not want UAP transparency? Got my eye on you. But aside from that, it's interesting. And I'm glad that Joe Rogan asked Grush about it. Grush was able to answer on that. But um, hopefully we will receive maybe better acts in the future like disclosure acts for instance or future bills that will be passed and maybe might be more beneficial to the public than this one so we'll see and laurie thank you for that thank you for that i I appreciate it very much so and this was last week's news i know people were like christina why are you covering this now because i wasn't here last week so we're covering it this week but to kind of wrap that in with another article that's still in the same kind of category is that the united states of america has reportedly been undertaking covert missions to recover ufos at least nine non-human crafts that have thus been collected Um, thus far by a secret team of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and the Office of Global Access is believed to have found at least two UFOs in an undamaged condition. That is a ginormous statement. It is whack, and it went all over the news, at least, you know, like UFO news, right? Because this was reported by the Daily Mail. And the Daily Mail, you can take it or leave it. Not everyone thinks it's credible, and some do. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other, but it's interesting that the Daily Mail reported on this and then other media outlets were grabbing this article and, and publishing it further out. So you have the Daily Mail commenting on this, receiving this information, talking to anonymous people, and that's... Uh, and I know it frustrates so many people, myself included, when... You're anybody. It doesn't even matter who you are. I would just be a private citizen or a journalist, whatever, right? And and you write up an article or even a blog and you say, so-and-so told me, but I cannot tell you their credentials or their name or anything like that. You just got to take my word for it. That makes me want to pull out my hair, right? Because people lie all of the time. And as I had mentioned a little bit earlier, right, the UFO topic has become a very hot topic recently. And so people say, oh, this is just a money grab, right? 
Now, could these names come to the public soon? For instance, David Grush, his name was in the dark for a while. The, the, the new director of the UFO office of NASA, he was in the dark for a few hours before NASA came forward and said, all right, you can bet your boots, we'll tell you his name. But what I'm getting at here is it can be a little frustrating. And John, yes, anonymous sources make you question the information. It does. And it bothers a lot of people, myself included. I'm in the same boat as you. But could that information at some point be made public? I want to I wanna really, really hope so here because the journalist is, is, is putting his credentials on the line saying, well, I got this, this, and this information, but I cannot tell you, at least not yet, who these people are. Yeah, it makes you question everything, especially this huge statement of the Office of Global Access, which between you and me, I've never heard of before. Okay, just putting it out there. And then for them to say they've collected nine craft and two are fully intact. Well, yes, it backs up what Grush said, but Grush has come out to the public. He's been scrutinized over and over and over again. And now these people are kind of jumping the bandwagon from what Grush said, but they're not putting their credentials or their name on the line. I thought it was worth mentioning, but it's, it's just an odd one here. And Juan, thank you for that. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Always appreciate it. But let me know what you are thinking regarding, at, at the very least, these last two articles referring to the government. I, I've gotten a handful of comments because, again, I do try to read them to the best of my ability of people saying, oh, why do people care about what the government has to say and government aspect of disclosure? I get you. Okay. I understand. Why listen to the government now? out of all the other years where they've just been covering, covering, covering up. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? Actually, we have an interest in UFOs. I get that mentality. I do. But for many people, I'm not saying for everyone here, but for many people, they look to the government for answers. And so when they are showing this interest on a mass scale, it's saying to people, you should have an interest in this as well. You should look into this and you should read more information and, and whatever else. If the government didn't mention all that since, uh, let's say, 2017, right? There wasn't that big of an interest in UFOs, unlike today, where people are actually taking it a lot more seriously than before, including the media, where they're not playing, at least as often, the X-Files theme music when showing a UFO video. Does it still happen? Yes, it does. And when I first jumped into the topic, I was like, yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not, it's not insulting. Now I'm thinking, really? It's, first of all, it's unoriginal, it's boring, and it's lazy. That's my mentality today. But if you were asking that same question like a year or two ago, I would say it's not that big of a deal. The mentality changes all the time and perceptions change all the time. But disclosure is going to come from the people at the very end of the day, not from the government, not from a documentary, not from a book, not from a person per se. But it's going to come from the people as a whole. And every single person has their own definition of what disclosure means. But that shouldn't stop us from seeing how the government is reacting or reporting on UFOs. Because it is adding this layer of complexity to this topic more so than ever before. And that's why it interests a lot of people. Not everyone, but a good majority. Tinkers says, I look to the government for comedy. Hey, if you can't laugh at anything, I mean, just don't laugh at all, right? But actually, that's not how the saying goes. It's, if you can't laugh at yourself, how can you not laugh at anything else, right? But we changed it up here last minute on a whim. And it didn't roll off the tongue as it did mentally. It sounded a lot better in here than uh, coming out of my mouth. Hillbilly Herb says, I'll take a disclosure. Cheers. Why not? Everyone needs some kind of disclosure. Marty says, the phenomenon is and will be disclosure itself. Yes. Nailed it, Marty. That was, that was poetic right there. 
Eric says, laughter heals. Yes, it does. Can't have it any other way. Cat videos make me laugh every time and it never fails. But I have another little tidbit for you. Getting away from UFOs, but jumping into the paranormal here. And we got to look at ghosts. This is a cool ghost story that happened rather recently in the UK. You can take it or leave it if you think it's real or not. I'm just going to read you the information that I found that I thought, you know what? It's strange. We're on strange news. We have to cover it. So here it is. Here's an image. It's this little red circle right here. It's a ghost. Bum, bum, bum. So this, as the article says from the mirror, is a terrifying moment for a mom capturing a ghost of an eerie an elderly woman outside of the window watching her son learning to ride his bike. Ba ba ba. So this spooky picture was captured by a mom, Louise Lenton, at Old Way Mansion in Pinkton, Denvin, which dates back uh, to the ninth century. And it shows her five-year-old boy doing laps around the car park at 5 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, which is what the Devon Live reports. Now, it's just 5 o'clock and it's still that bright outside. First of all, I'm impressed because now the sun goes down at what, like 5.20, 5.30? My day doesn't start until like 4 o'clock, all right? But here, what what's interesting about this article in particular is the mom didn't realize this elderly woman in like watching through the window until she went back to her phone and watching her adorable son learning how to ride a bike. And then she does a little zoom. She goes, zoom, 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 hold up, hold up. What's that creepy little woman, old looking woman doing staring at my son like that? That is not okay. And in today's world, yeah, it's not, it's not the best. And so she does a little bit of digging and she ends up uh, contacting the security guards of that mansion just across from her and says, hey, is there an elderly woman living there wearing kind of Victorian type clothing with the hair nice and did as they say these days? And the security guards were saying, there's no one that lives here. There was no one on that floor during that time period except the security guards and no one was looking out the window and there was nobody wearing Victorian clothing during that time frame when you took the video. Take it or leave it. It's, it's, it's a wild one. But it's what I like about this particular photo is that we are given at some form of tangible, something tangible to look at. Could it have been Photoshop? Could this whole story have been fake? Yeah, I, I could have, but this lady is putting her location on the line, her name on the line, and her son. Now, we don't have, we don't know what is what her son looks like. We want to see the back of him, right? We don't know his name, which is how it should be when it comes to children. Don't make that information public. But aside from that, it, it would kind of suck if it was all a lie just for a little bit of a gag, right? Now, can that happen? Yes, sure it can. But we had to take this for face value and say, has there been a moment in my life thinking, you know, all of us thinking this at least once where I have been in that predicament, right? And so this is going to spike curiosity in people's minds and or reminisce in a, in a memory that they once had of an incident like this. And that is the, I would say more positive way to look at this than say, oh, I'm not, I'm not fake. Everything's fake. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, we should be skeptical, but we need to think about it from a more curious mindset and sasha thank you for that christina gomez uh, is a real life female buckaroo bonanza ban banze banze thank you i don't know what that means but i appreciate that <laughs> maybe i even read that wrong <laughs> i i need to look it up now and what that means and juan thank you what do you think about satori and cody paranormal couple that communicate with ghosts to be fair, I'm not familiar with them. I'll need to look that up now. So I cannot give commentary on what they do. <laughs> Gosh, now I'm getting really, really, like my cheeks are getting really warm. <laughs> DJ says, 
It's a uh, photographical processing level. It is a weird image. Yeah, it is odd. But this is actually a screenshot from a video. That's what the mom said, at least in the article, which also makes it kind of odd here. But now, now we're getting into science because you know strange science is what we live for here yes we get ufos and the paranormal but like science advancements space oh, it hits the spot almost every single time and this one this what this article makes me smile like no other why because mercury all right first of all mercury closest planet to the sun the hottest planet in our solar system obviously right but but with new information Scientists are saying, you know what, with these salt glaciers that we found in one of the craters, it might, it might harbor life. <gasps> That's insane. Because for the longest time, right, people have been saying, Mercury, nope, no life, none whatsoever. It's too close to the sun. It is, it is a fiery hell and that's it. But now, According to Planetary Science Journal, which this article was published in early November, they are saying, well, you know, while we had these this mentality a few years ago, it's changing now. And with these salty glaciers that we found, there might be a little ditty bitty itty bit of habitable life. And you know what? I am living for that. Why? First of all, that's super great information. That is sick information. But aside from that, it goes and it demonstrates to the world that it is okay for your mindset to change and to evolve. And with more research, you will find new answers. You do not need to be a stickler and say, well, the, the sun revolves around the earth. That was the mentality 100, 200, 300 years ago. But now we know that is not at all true. Now, if you're a narcissist, then yes, it's still like that. But for the rest of the world, no, it's not. And so with this, it, it demonstrates saying it is okay to change your mind. You do not have to be stick something for the rest of your life, even if you know it's wrong. That's what I love about this article. The absolute most, by the way. And Crystal, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And David, thank you. Hi, Christina. Could you share any ET, UFO, paranormal experiences you've had firsthand? Thanks. I will, I will, I will do that when I finish this article. I will tell you a story for those that don't know about a few of them. So also with these glaciers, they were found in Mercury's Raditladi and Eminescu craters. Did I read that wrong? Did I butcher it? Maybe, but we're going to pretend that maybe I did a really good job. And so that's, that's where they're finding these salty glaciers where it could harbor life. The more you know. <laughs> Eric, bring in the jokes. That's so funny. Hi, April. Good to see you. <laughs> So you can read that into a bunch more detail. All of the article links will be in the description box below for you to read. I love to provide that information to you and for you as well. And it goes into a more scientific detail on that. Um, and I just, I have a few more articles for you, but to address David, I will give you actually, you know what? I've shared my story of the haunted vacuum for, uh, it seemed like a little clip of it. Um, but I will share a brand new story that I've never shared before. And it's not mine, but I came out of this woman, a.k.a. my mom. So therefore, is it my story? Yes. And here's how it went. So I spoke to my mother last week and I mentioned this. No, I haven't mentioned this. I mentioned this on Patreon. But for the very first time, she shared her paranormal experiences with me and a UFO sighting that she had in Caracas, I believe, in 1986 when she was about 13 years old. And it was a crazy story, by the way. But I'm going to share with you a story that happened recently to her. So she was sleeping in a bed, as you do. <laughs> what a great way to start a story. She was sleeping in a bed. But in, in, in all honesty, in all seriousness, she was in her bed uh, in the middle of the night next to her husband. And she has a mirror in her bedroom. And if you know anything about me and mirrors, we do not get along, especially when it's dark. 
nightmares or spooky at night. But she had mentioned that something had woken her up. And this happened, I want to say, a few months ago. And uh, she, she saw six and she counted them. My, my mother is no liar, by the way. She mentioned that she saw six Catholic looking monks, the ones with like that the wear all white from like the 1600s walking from her bedroom into a mirror, into the mirror in her bedroom. And she counted them one by one. She was fully awake. She mentioned that she pinched herself because if you know me, I went into full interview mode. And I'm like, mom, what time was this at? What was going through your mind? How many were there? I was asking the questions in detail here. And she wasn't necessarily scared per se, but she was a bit nervous as anyone would be when you see strangers coming into your bedroom at night. Okay, pretty freaky right there. But they, all six of them went into the mirror and they never returned. So what did my mother do? She did what any sane person would do. And she got some sage and she saged that that mirror as quick as she could and she took it out of the bedroom she's like i am not i'm not going through this yet again and she didn't and that is a wacky paranormal story that my mother had just a few months ago and it's never been told on air the more you know now we are getting into another story here and this one is about robots ai but also also, we got to bring in Mars into this. And you might ask yourself, what are you talking about, Christina? Well, first of all, Elon Musk wanted to get people on Mars by 2024. That is not going to happen. Now he pushed it, I want to say, 28 to 2030-ish time frame. But people are always worried about the aspect of oxygen. How are we going to create enough oxygen for a habitat on Mars? It makes Okay, it's a very, very valid question. Oh, well, this is insane. Because published in Nature Synth Synthesis, Synthesis, there was an article mentioning that a robot chemist powered by artificial intelligence could solve the puzzle of providing oxygen to humans on Mars. And so this AI robot could quickly figure out how to cook up vital oxygen for survival compared to humans, which would take a lifetime to complete such a task. And so the reason, according to the paper, is there are more than a million potential oxygen evolution reaction known as an OER catalysts on Mars, which would give humans too many possibilities to work with when trying to create oxygen. And adding to the problem would be the communication with Earth to solve the problems because there is that lag there, right? That communication lag. So with transmissions taking as long as 20 minutes to travel between the home planet and Mars. So let's say, right, for instance, you are trying to put something together. And you're like, okay, do I cut the, the yellow? wire or the red wire right and you only have one chance it'll take 20 minutes to get that answer those stress levels would be so high by the time you get an answer back you first had black hair now it's fully white from the level of stress right 20 minute lag mm. and these days when everything is instant and if i don't get a text back in three seconds it's game over okay imagine it for these guys so they're saying okay with ai robots they will give you those answers way faster and cut down all the, so many more possibilities on how to create oxygen and not waste your entire lifetime to find those answers. That is a big deal. But also, this is a beautiful example of the proper way to use AI and robots. People have this huge fear. And we've covered a handful of pretty spooky stories regarding AI and robots and how it could just destroy humanity but in this case with this particular example it's beneficial and it's also crucial and empowering i believe to have them by your side as an aid more so than a ruler right so i love this article i was like this is the coolest thing on the planet and it's out of this world I'm sorry. I'll see myself out after the show. So the study envisions that 
Instead of the lifetime a human would consume with the trial and error method, AI robots would solve the puzzle within six weeks. So let's say when they are mentioning here a lifetime for a human, right? We're looking at the age of, let's say, 23. You had the basic knowledge to go to Mars and, and, and be a better problem solver to maybe the age of 65. All right. And I'm just I'm just guessing here on what they mean by a lifetime. So we're looking at 40, 45 years. They're saying that an AI robot could do it in six weeks. You know how fast this year went? 52 weeks, 365 days. It, it, it went too fast. Six weeks, that's like a minute in human, in, in, in human time these days. <laughs> So I thought it was very cool. And it says here, within six weeks, the AI chemist built a, a model by learning from nearly 30,000 theoretical data sets and 340 experimental data sets in just six weeks. It's crazy. And that article also goes into more detail on that as well, because... You, you, you want to read it. It's, it's insane. Now, Tyler and I could not agree more. He says, I swear it was July last month. Where did this year go? I feel like the older you get, the faster the years go. Like when you're a kid, okay, let's just back it up just for a sec. Just go into your child mentality. You were pumped for summer. You were ready for Christmas. And it came by so slowly. But then when you become an adult, you have a different routine. And with that routine of not following a school one, the, the time goes by so much faster. But also the perception of time differs as you age because you have all those previous years behind you to look back on. A child, on the other hand, only has a limited amount of years and their perspective is very different from that of an adult. So while time is moving at the same pace, it is the perspective that makes it feel like it's going too fast or too slow. And when you think about it from that standpoint it's crazy it, i mean it, it's like literal time travel mentally right and if you just casually talk about this to like literally anyone they'll say christina shut up what the heck are you talking about that is such invaluable information and i'm thinking are you joking that is the coolest you could be a time traveler right now based off of your perception of time Someone's going to correct me and say, no, Christina, that's that's not true. It is true in my mind. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what matters here. But Mark says it's relative. Yes, it is. Thank you, Eric. I can't take full credit for that one. And Tim, thank you for that. And Cassidy, thank you so much as well. Thank you, guys. Y'all are so nice. Perception is key, says DJ. Yes, it is. Ooh, Tinker says, just wait till you pass 70 at Mach 3. Dude, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready. Ooh, David bringing in the artistic aspect to it. Dali's melting clock is cool. I like it. If you're enjoying the show, hit that like button right now. We have 405 people watching this live. If you're enjoying the show or the commentary or literally any of the articles that we covered today, hit that like button down below. It lets me know that you are enjoying the show and it tells YouTube, hey, we want more content like this. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that right now as we do three live shows right here every single week. I have one final article for you and the best for last this one is absolutely hilarious this article is so funny and the amount of comments and memes that have been written about this one are top notch okay number one um number two you can make your own jokes in the comments and in the live chat and i would really enjoy to read them out loud of course only if they're appropriate but let's get into this one because we're talking about a flaming toilet People are going to say, oh my gosh, Taco Bell. Yeah, well, no, in this case, not the case because a Chinese man barely managed to get off of his smart toilet when with his bum intact 
after smoke started coming out of the toilet bowl, bowl and the whole thing just burst into flames. <laughs> So the Yangtze Evening News newspaper recently reported a story of a man from Fujian province who recorded his smart toilet burning after a suspected short circuit. And this took place November 10th, which is insane. Just to back it up for a sec, I had to ask myself, what the heck is a smart toilet? Why are you putting electronics with water here, right? And I know for a diddly darn fact, I am not the only one asking that question. So a smart toilet <laughs> is, they're classified as a piece of luxury, but it has a plumbing fixture that incorporates technology to add additional functions such as self-cleaning like a bidet, lighting, warming, and massaging features to a toilet. OK, it can also be controlled with voice command, remote control and mobile apps. That is luxury, honestly, at its finest. OK, that's amazing. But back to the article here. So th this took place November 10th uh, while this guy was using the bathroom. And, you know, if it's a guy and he's sitting down, he's he's doing he's taking his time there. And at first there was this smell of smoke when plumes of white smoke just started blowing up from the toilet bowl. And finally, just as the man got up, okay, the smart toilet, toilet just burst into flames. So first there's a little bit of smoke and then shh, total explosion. And here's a picture of the man that obviously had this happen to him. And you can see his pants on the floor. And his slippers as well. And then here's the aftermath of this bad boy. I mean, just totally ruined in shambles. There is no going back from that. And <laughs> it's just so great. Like, it's almost as bad as the line of my dog ate my homework. No one would believe you if you were to say, dude, I was just I was taking a massive dump. And then my toilet just exploded, threw up, went into flames. People would think that you're insane and an amazing storyteller. But then you show them the proof, show them the images, and they're like, no freaking way. And then they throw away their smart toilet. I had to say this one for last. It's just, it's just too funny and it's too bizarre. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> But Chris, he's got a compassionate heart. And he says, joking aside, was the man hurt? So he was, as it mentioned in the article, he was able to get off uh, before these flames started ex literally exploding. Only with a little bit of smoke. So he's fine. Nothing happened to him. But he did get some pretty intense shots, as we are seeing here. What would be even worse, though, is that like if you were at someone's place... And it wasn't like your toilet, but it was your friends. It'd be so much worse. <laughs> or like on a first date. Oh, or just like a date would seem matter, right? That'd be awful. Oh, embarrassing as well. <laughs> Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's too funny. <laughs> But is, is it the first time this has happened? There was another one that took place in the Zhejiang province um, earlier this year, actually in August, of a similar incident. And a fun little fact, the smart toilet was actually invented in the United States back in 1964. However, Japan has long been known as the biggest smart toilet market in the world. But this took place in China. The more you know that this is... This is This is why we have this show, to cover the strange news. <laughs> if you enjoy the show, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. But also on my Instagram at strange paradigms where I share pictures and short videos. If you wish to continue this conversation, bring it over to the Discord server with 2,700 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this live, all the super chats, super 
bumper stickers, YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and of course, all of my amazing moderators. You know I cannot do this show without you. If you are enjoying everything that you're seeing on this channel, consider being a Patreon supporter where all the funding goes right to the channel, to Puck the Puck YG, and to the RV Fund, where I'll be traveling the U.S., hitting all the UFO and paranormal hotspots, documenting it, and taking you on the journey with me. But here's another little aspect to my outro. And that is, some of you might not know this, but I have, I make space ambient music. I have a YouTube channel called Cosmic Portals, and I'm pumping out more music content. If you need help relaxing, falling asleep, meditating, or just using your imagination to wander the universe, take a look at my space ambient music channel called Cosmic Portals portals you can find it right on youtube and it's a small channel only about a thousand subscribers right now but it's one that if you if you like that genre you're really going to enjoy that music that i make so take a look at it it's a nice little re relaxation thing for me to do aside from this channel of course and i placed that link down below for you and i'll just kind of highlight it it's right there you can find it in the live chat so take a look at that actually when we end the show okay but that is it for today i will see you next time be safe and remember keep your eyes on the skies <laughs>